Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our Gospel text is John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 15. We have two of the apostles asking Jesus, in effect, who are you? What is the meaning of your life and message? First of all, Thomas. Thomas wants to know how to get where they are supposedly going. Reasonable question, one would have thought. But instead of data and information, Jesus gives him the promise of an encounter. I am the way, Thomas. And then Philip wants to see the Father. He's heard Jesus speak about the Father who loves him. Show us the Father. There's an element of frustration in Jesus' reply to Philip. Philip, I've been with you all this time and you still don't understand. To see me is to see the Father. These are very enigmatic responses. And we will never fully understand them. But we can begin to get some insight if we go back to another, if you like, similar situation. The time that Moses was quizzing God, the Lord of the Covenant. Who are you? The response he gets is a sort of a revelation that's not a revelation. I am who I am most. A proclamation of God's sovereignty, God's unnameability, God's uncontrollability, the ultimate mystery. What is happening here in Jesus is a monumental, unimaginable, even stark transition to a new way of naming and thinking about God. In Jesus, we find God's being in the flesh. To move to this new way of thinking about God is to undergo a transition, transformation of mind and heart. We must think differently about God, ourselves, and the world in which we find ourselves. In Jesus, we encounter the I am that Moses encountered on Sinai, except we see Jesus present amongst us as one of us. In John's Gospel, we must go to the prologue, repeatedly return to the prologue if we do understand what's happening in the rest of the gospel. Listen to the words at the very beginning, the outset of John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. All things came into being through him, and without him nothing would exist. The Word became flesh. He became one of us. We saw his glory. What is on offer in the incarnation? What is is pure gift? It is a continuation of the covenant of old. God taking the initiative to engage with this people. To make himself available to a people. They become his people. This is God's initiative, not ours. We wouldn't have known anything about it if God hadn't revealed it. It will turn our worlds upside down and inside out if we take it serious. And that's precisely what we should do. Otherwise, we become victims of fictional identities, manufactured by our pain, our fear, our selfishness and our pride, status, cultural influences, all of which fabricate a thicket of unreality, something quite other than what is on offer through God, through the incarnation, through Jesus, through the event that is Jesus. I can therefore think of my life in the light of this event as a process 
whereby in him, with him, and through him, in Christ, the great I am of Sinai is transforming the I am of me. I am becoming real through him, with him, and in him. What God intended me to be. What a travesty it is when we reduce this great divine affection, this recreation to theological concepts and information, moral imperatives and right behavior, law, status, power, institutions, all have their own place, but none is a substitute for the great gift that's on offer. Such reductionism contributes to the fictional identities that we so easily manufacture and hide in. Christian life actually begins, we could say, with a discovery. The discovery is this, that before I ever sought God, God sought me. Pope Francis has a delightful familial conversational recall of an event when he was 16 years of age. Let me read it. It was a surprise, says Francis, the amazement of an encounter. I realized they were waiting for me. That was the religious experience the amazement of meeting someone who is waiting for you. From that moment on, for me, God is the one who anticipates you. You are looking for him, but he is the one who finds you first. You want to meet him. He is the one who comes to meet you first.